So Greg, what were the 10 words that put you into this tailspin? I'm sick of this S word. I'm gonna harm the children. Please do not attack or harass people involved in this video. A lot of this is in the past, meaning that many fans in the community have already addressed the situation and there isn't any need to usher more harassment on the issue. This is solely to document the events of what happened to the voice actor of Colin Rutherford and Anders in Dragon Age Awakening. Therefore, it is advisable for you to make your own decisions based on this information, keeping in mind your thoughts on Ellis's recent actions. Greg Ellis is not his real name. He actually goes by Jonathan Ashley Reese. He renamed himself to gain legal rights for his acting. When he reached the age of 16, he applied to become an adult member of the Actors Union Equity and discovered that there was already an actor named Johnny Reese. Jonathan was born on March 21st, 1968 in England. Greg began his acting career in the 1990s, mostly in live action roles and even went on to be an extra for Titanic in 1997. Can I tell your name, please, love? Dawson. And although his acting was mostly known in film in the beginning, he also worked in animation and, of course, video games. Oh, um, uh, hello. I, uh, I'm glad to see your harrowing went smoothly. Ellis was also known to be a producer. Greg founded the production company called Monkey Toes back in 2014. When Ellis's first son was born, he nicknamed him Monkey Toes, which inspired the production company name. Aside from his professional accomplishments, his personal life and family problems were not excused. On March 25th, 2015, Jonathan's wife filed for the divorce in the Los Angeles County Court. Media spurred in the moment of this case, and while the wife was not made public with her statement on the separation, Ellis took the ground to show his disappointment with the decision. Ellis was reported missing from his North Hollywood home on May 11th, 2016. An article quotes, Ellis was last seen on May 12th in a severely manic episode. He's been suffering from bipolar disorder and has refused treatment which has led loved ones to believe that his disappearance may be related to a manic episode. Details have emerged shown that he left his ID, his keys, and phone at home with all the doors open no social media updates since the 12th, and was officially reported missing when he did not show up to meet his kids. There were reports that Ellis had been a cocaine addict for some time and went into rehab during 2016. His use of cocaine was documented in his book called The Respondent. He admitted that he was afraid his own sons would discover it one day. Ellis quotes, I took the phone from Charlie, his son, placed it in my pocket, was a wallet. A wallet that I used to store the tiny amounts of cocaine that I'd kept in a folded up piece of white paper. There was no more cocaine in the wallet or the piece of paper, but being the drug novice that I was, feared that the children would get a hold of it. And four days later, there was an update from Ellis's friend, Jeff Rosenthal, who tweeted that the actor has been found safe and is currently at his own home. It is undetermined to claim Jonathan got proper care for rehab for his use of drugs, and as much as his own words described he did, there is a bigger sense that he got his refuge in philosophy through the Tompkins Institute. The Tompkins Institute, a nonprofit organization that applies the foundational work of an award winning psychologist called Sylvan S. Tompkins. According to Ellis's website, he is a student of the dialectical approach to the phenomenology of feelings and currently studies effect theory. Sylvan S. Tompkins does have writings about smoking and addictions that were published in the 1960s as articles. So perhaps Ellis took a liking to his writings and even consoled in them. However, that does not make one an expert to teach others in faith and philosophy. Magic City Con 
On June 30th, 2017, Magic City Con, located in Birmingham, Alabama, invited Greg Ellis, a voice actor of Colin Rutherford, to be a VIP guest. The first session wasn't too bad, mostly just trivia and fun. When people started asking him questions, however, he sort of danced around them. He never really answered anything and had this sort of smug look like he was so clever for answering the way he did. He was eccentric to be sure, but he didn't really seem toxic, yet. On Saturday, we all showed up to his poetry and Q&A event to find the coordinators basically running around like chickens with their heads cut off, saying he switched everything in the programming last minute because he had something he wanted to show us. So after about 45 minutes, I think, we all go in and sit down. Ellis does a quick Q&A with us, answering a few questions about his career and what have you, then plays Save Myself on piano. The Tumblr fan says he then told us that he wanted to share with us a podcast that he'd been making about his life, his struggles with emotions, and how he's learned about them, etc. We all agree, and so he starts the first podcast, which I believe it can still be found on his website, telling us to close our eyes and feel. As a survivor of a cult which used similar tactics, I will admit that my stomach sort of did this nauseated twist at that moment, but I digress. This was the philosophy teaching of Sylvan S. Tompkins pushing onto fans at Magic CityCon. The fan bullet pointed the speech Ellis gave to the fans in the room. The first bullet point says mental wealth issues, mental illnesses, trauma, etc. can be cured by us coming to terms with our emotions and learning not to suppress them. Second bullet point says mental illnesses do not require any sort of psychotropic medication. Medicines made for the purpose of mental health are only made to keep people from dealing with their emotional problems. Last bullet point, terrorism could be solved if we all just sat down and talked. Good luck with that, mate. Weeks passed, and Bioware fans from the conference attempted to make sense of what had happened via a Magic City Con Bioware Facebook page. Eventually, some of the colonites in that group decided to contact or tweet Ellis, showing him screen caps of the conversation and had to express their concern for him. This even included a trained counselor who was present at the conference tagged him on Twitter, claiming that telling people not to take their medications is very dangerous and deadly advice. Greg Ellis eventually had the counselor blocked on all of his social media accounts. Still, I've found certainty in my life now. The council won't change that. Marry me. Let's begin to talk about a parasocial relationship. The definition of this term parasocial relationship is a one-sided relationship in which one person expends emotional energy, interest, and time while the other party, the persona, is completely unaware of the existence of the other. Celebrities, sports teams, television stars, and even content creators are the most common subjects of parasocial relationships. Fans can get emotionally intact with these types of people, and even prop them up on a pedestal thinking they can do no wrong. Of course, video game characters are not excluded, especially when fans can romance that specific character. And the Dragon Age fandom is no different. Ellis was already disappointing fans throughout his past tweets on political issues and opinions about America. Being a U.S. citizen for a while, Greg Ellis has shown support for Donald Trump on January 5th, 2016. He tweeted about being very proud of the President of the United States. There were many problematic tweets Ellis had in 2018. For instance, in one tweet he tagged most of whom were Meninists, known Trump supporters, and anti-trans and anti-LGBTQIA plus people. One fan replied, I think you just broke the hearts of thousands of colonites. LGBTQ folks adore the Dragon Age franchise because it includes them. Donald Trump is a hate-filled man who appointed a conversion therapy proponent as his vice president. Ellis replied, Speaking on behalf of thousands of fans of a video game and suggesting I broke all their hearts because I support all who hold presidential office is ludicrous. Video game fandom is not exclusive to LGBTQ or those not hate-filled about the President of the United States. I believe in equity and inclusivity.
Good evening. As we come on the air in the West tonight, President Trump addressing the American people just a short time ago as the toll of the coronavirus widens here in the U.S. The traumatic year of 2020, a raging pestilence that kept us inside our homes, fearing for our lives of what was next, and the horrific murder of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. Greg posted a video titled The States of America on June 2nd, 2020. It's made up of footage from the summer 2020 protests, some of which he shot himself and some of which he got from news sources. In the video, Greg Ellis uses a photo of Devontae Hart hugging Portland Police Sergeant Brent Barnum, which was taken back in 2014. Devontae Hart and his five adopted siblings were murdered by their adopted parents later in 2018 after the photo was a known fact to be staged. Greg Ellis then went on to tweet, which has now been deleted, using the hashtag All Lives Matter towards the event of George Floyd, and he mentions the hashtag many times later on in the month of June. A fan posted on the same day, Well, never meet your heroes, they say. I was always a fan, but holy. Tell someone to delete something because it's offensive and get told to virtue signal elsewhere. The boy in the image was murdered in a murder-suicide along with his siblings, after being pulled from family and put into an abusive, adopted home. They still haven't found his body, but he's being used for a copaganda. Also, all lives matter tag, no. Ellis then replied many times saying, Normally I take a tax like this on the chin, not tonight. How dare you lecture me about a hashtag. I lost both my sons, 8 and 10 years old, when their mother had a panic attack and stopped taking her psychotropic medication. I know more about living grief than you could imagine. It seemed like Ellis was projecting many times, mentioning his sons, tweeting about his political opinions, some seemed unfinished, and even random ramblings according to some fans. During this time, Rowling was saying a lot about the trans community, including a tweet about people who menstruate, implying that only women menstruate as a joke in order to ignore the fact that trans people exist. So Greg Ellis quote retreats Ayan Hersey's Ali's tweet, I praise Ayan for supporting JK Rowling and standing her ground. They are heroes of our times. At this point, Ellis's actions were gaining traction in the Dragon Age community. Knowing that Colin Rutherford had appeared in all three games, many assumed he would appear in the fourth. So many fans began to tag Bioware developers for their thoughts on this controversy. One fan tweeted, On a Dragon Age note, recast Colin. I will not stand for Greg Ellis's reprising his role in the series knowing that he is a blatant transphobe who enables systemic racism. As a company who gave us characters like Krem and May, you could do much better, Bioware. Mark Dura, executive producer for Dragon Age at that time, bulk replied to many of these types of posts saying, like you, it's important to us that the people we work with are aligned with our Bioware values. This will be apparent when we're ready to announce which actors will be lending their voices to the game. A relief to many fans, a month later, Ellis replied to Mark saying, What are the Bioware values, Mark Dura? Don't the loyal Colentees, Colonites misspelled, and Dragon Age fans have a right to know? Don't you have a responsibility to tell them? While Mark Dura was still currently working on Dragon Age Dreadwolf at that time, he did not reply to Ellis' remarks and bashes during the fall of 2020. On December 3rd, 2020, Mark Durad resigned from his position as executive producer for the next upcoming Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Ellis replied to Mark saying, And a relief for many others. I've worked with you for over 10 years as the voice of Colin and Anders on Dragon Age and have never worked with a more disloyal, duplicitous corporate fake. Your enforced resignation is a victory for Bioware and its employees, and particularly the fans. December 4th is known to be hashtag Dragon Age Day. So while the sad news of Mark and Casey leaving on December 3rd, Ellis' tweets did not help on such a day to celebrate Dragon Age. So that is when Mark decided to finally reply to Greg Ellis once and for all. And it starts by saying, Hey there, Greg. I've been letting you slide for a while, but I think Dragon Age Day is maybe the day when that ends. 
Is there some world where you imagine that your behavior with regards to me and the community in general would actually cause you to ever be hired on a Dragon Age game? I'm not sure if this is performative in some way in order to get the attention of a different group, but it certainly isn't going to endear you to a company that cares about its public appearance. And many current Bioware developers retweeted and liked Mark's response, indicating that they too agreed with Mark's sentiment. To conclude on his tweet, Ellis will not be hired for the next Dragon Age game and many others in the future. The cancellation of Cullen Rutherford. Greg Ellis posted a live pre-recorded video about the Dragon Age fandom on Dragon Age Day, December 4th, 2020. The video is about 37 minutes and 55 seconds long, and it consists of Ellis voice acting as Cullen while speaking about Ellis in third person. Again, manipulating the parasocial relationship in the fandom. Throughout the video, Ellis shamelessly promotes his respondents' website and explains how and why he was cancelled. He dubbed those who responded as corporate wokeism. One fan replied to Mark about Ellis using Colin for his benefit in the video, stating, Hey, Mark Dura, serious question. Can Greg Ellis get in trouble for using Colin's voice and claim of using Colin as a character to pass off his ideals to others on YouTube? That's his so-called Dragon Age announcement he has planned coming up. Mark replied saying, Yes, yes he can. The video then went private on Greg Ellis' channel. Presently, Greg Ellis has been interviewed many times with Dark Horse Podcast and Jordan B. Peterson. His YouTube and Twitter are mostly about the Amber Heard case, and even before this case got mainstream, he supported Johnny Depp from the start. But some still question Ellis only talks about Johnny's case to stay relevant even in the acting industry at all. I believe this is what the Dragon Age fandom wanted to say to Ellis. Ellis, once you publish these types of views, you jeopardize your brand and, as a result, your job. Perhaps he knew this was his way out and decided the risk was worth it. Is it acceptable to hire someone based on their religious beliefs? No, but that's an idealistic point of view. The reality is frequently a sharp contrast. People hire those who follow their values, and Ellis does not value the same ideals as Byra does. I want to be transparent that the voice actor for Colin is not Colin. You can still romance him and be disappointed in a voice actor. But if we separate them from their own roles, we can be in a better position through a fandom. And I understand the struggle to separate the two. It does get hard. I also want to add that there is an underlying issue beyond this that Ellis faces, and it stems from losing his family. I won't go into detail through opinions, but will only use the sources provided. According to 2020 studies, the family court favors fathers in contrast to mothers, which is due in part to the fact that very few fathers actually seek custody during divorce. I will admit that Ellis appears to feel personally attacked by these movements of Me Too and feminism, that he feels unheard by them, and that he seems to desire an apology for it. The Me Too movement was not intended to be limited to women. Men need to feel heard and seen as well. However, as in many movements, there will be people who are in the wrong voices in these organizations. And sometimes I wish those voices that were raised weren't always the loudest. I agree that the legal system has its flaws. My family personally dealt with the custody of my own sister for years. It is a system that likely relies on exploiting horrific situations, such as a father losing their child during divorce. But the way Ellis goes about it does not have to require tearing down women while elevating men in any context, pushing women down on issues such as sexual assault, divorce, and child support in order to elevate men does not benefit anyone, and especially victims of any gender in marriage. According to his book, Ellis seems to really not explain the family law thoroughly, but rather just quotes them drop blank and moves on to the next. His reviews on Amazon for his book summarize it well. The allegations in this book can be proven false just by looking at the author's old blog. 
He lost custody of his children after he became high in front of them, fired their nanny, despite court orders that she had to be there, and scared them enough that they called for help. Yet this book is just one person's own false and fantastical narrative. He paints the system that protected his children and many others as a vile villain and rants against women, lawyers, and anyone who does not fit his narrative as a victim. There is more realistic pieces of fiction out there and they are labeled correctly. This sounds like a villain in like a cartoon. Andrastes. Nicker weasels. <laughs> Andrastes, nicker weasels. Greg, I want you to know, I want you to hear my voice and know that we do not stand with you. And I'm so glad that Bioware is too. Greg Ellis employing the parasocial relationship people have with Colin Rutherford, a fictional character who he does not own or have any legal right to. Those of us who care about the character are tying you too closely to it. Well, no, I'm sorry. You took that position. You worked on those games. You put yourself in our path, now is when we push you off it. Cancel culture is incredibly toxic. Greg Ellis, in his own way, is helping to fan the flames of this, that uses this cancel culture as an easy scapegoat to keep from being held accountable and for being made to, you know, <laughs> make change, be a better person. <laughs>